All right, let's finish up measures of variation. And now we want to talk a little bit about what's called the empirical rule and Chebyshev's theorem. Okay, so let's talk about this um, empirical rule, which is oftentimes also called the 6895 99.7 rule. So when we have data that is bell-shaped or symmetric, all right, we, the standard deviation is going to have the following characteristics. About 68% of the data lie within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, let me say this another way. Let's go one standard deviation out from the mean, and we're going to grab 68% of our data. All right, about 95% of the data lie within two standard deviations of the mean. So now let's go two standard deviations out from the mean, and we're going to grab 95% of our data. And then lastly, 99.7% of the data lie within three standard deviations of the mean. So here we go three standard deviations from the mean, and we're going to grab darn near all of our data. How much? 99.7%. All right, let's think about this said another way. If a data entry, all right, or, or some data is more than three standard deviations from the mean, it's an outlier, guys. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a data point that is far from our mean, all right? It is in that 0.3% that we can't grab when we grab within three standard deviations. All right, so in the homework, when you're asked questions about outliers, just know that an outlier defined statistically is going to be more than three standard deviations from the mean when we're dealing with symmetric or bell-shaped data. All right, so let's take a look at the picture of what I'm talking about. All right, within one standard deviation of the mean, all right, so here we take x bar, our sample mean, and we're going to add and subtract the standard deviation. This gives us the main part of our hump, right? It gives us 68% of our data. Now if we go one more standard deviation out, so now we are two standard deviations wide. So you can see here, this is saying, well, I take my sample mean and I subtract two standard deviations. Here, I take my sample mean and I add two standard deviations. I now have 95% of my data. And then lastly, if I take my sample mean and subtract three standard deviations and add three standard deviations, then I now have 99.7% of my data. All right. In other words, if we have a data point, say out here, it's an outlier. It's outside of three standard deviations. All right, so let's think about an example. In a survey conducted by the National Center for Health Statistics, the sample mean height of women in the U.S. ages 20 to 29 was 64.3 inches. All right, does anybody know what that is in feet? Roughly 5'4". With a sample standard deviation of 2.62 inches. Estimate the percent of the women whose heights are between 59.06 inches and 64.3 inches. All right, well, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, I'm going to take our data of 59.06, subtract it from the mean, or 64.3, and divide it by our sample standard deviation. This gives me negative 2. All right, in other words, I'm looking for the percent of women that are within two standard deviations below the mean. Why am I saying below? Because I'm not, oops, let's go back, whoops. All right, when I do my subtraction, I'm getting minus two. This 59.06 is below the mean. Okay, so that negative is telling me I want two standard deviations below the mean. All right, so what's that answer going to be? Well, I need two standard deviations below the mean. Here's one standard deviation below the mean. Here's another standard deviation below the mean. 
So I add 34 and 13.5, and I get that 47.5% of women are between 59.06 and 64.3 inches tall. Another way to think about this, guys, is, you know, when you get to the homework and, and you're doing some of these empirical rule problems, you're usually just adding, you know, sections of this distribution that are cut up, uh, kind of like adding uh, pieces and parts of a pie chart. All right, lastly, let's talk about Chebyshev's theorem. All right, the portion of any data set lying within k standard deviations of course, k has to be greater than 1, of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared. So Chebyshev's theorem is a little bit more, um, oh, how do I want to say? We can use Chebyshev's theorem when we don't have bell-shaped distributions. All right, so for example, let, this is for any distribution now, guys. If k equals 2. In any data set, at least 1 minus 1 over 2 squared or 4, all right, gives us 75% of the data lie within two standard deviations of the mean. All right, so again, it's a lot less aggressive. Let's go back here to our empirical rule. Well, within two standard deviations of the mean, and under the empirical rule with a bell-shaped distribution, we have 95% of our data. Chebyshev's rule tells us that when k equals 2, all right, in other words, when we're within two standard deviations of the mean, we, we can only count on 75% of our data. All right, and then it, to go within three standard deviations of the mean, we're at 88.9% of our data. So again, it's a lot less aggressive because we're dealing with distributions that aren't necessarily bell-shaped. So within two standard deviations of the mean for the empirical rule, we had 95%. Here with Chebyshev's, we only get 75%. And similarly, with the empirical rule, within three standard deviations, we had 99.7% of our data. Whereas with Chebyshev's theorem, with any distribution, we could only count on having 88.9% of our data. All right. Here's an example. The age distribution for Florida is shown in the histogram. Apply Chebyshev's theorem to the data using k equals 2. What can we conclude? All right, so we want to we got our mean here, which is 39.2. That's the average age of people living in Florida. We have our standard deviation of 24.8. We want to know, all right, what we can conclude using two standard deviations from the mean. All right. And notice before I, I go into how we're going to solve this, does this di distribution look symmetric? No, of course it doesn't. It looks kind of like we've got a lot of young people and middle-aged people. It looks closer to uniform than symmetric, if anything. So this is why we're using Chebyshev's theorem and not the empirical rule. We do not have that nice bell-shaped curve. All right, so two standard deviations from the mean. I'm going to take my mean, and I'm going to subtract two standard deviations. So I take my mean of 39.2, and I subtract 2 times the standard deviation gives me negative 10.4. Can that be an age? Heck no. All right, so we're just going to say that, we're just going to say that um, lower bound is just 0, all right, or newborns. All right, and then similarly, Let's do the upper bound. We take our mean and we're going to add two standard deviations. So we take 39.2 and add 2 times 24.8, giving us 88.8. .8. Now we're within two standard deviations of the mean. What percent does that give us? We can go back here. Well, we know from this slide it gives us 75% of our data. So let's go back to our chart here. So what this is telling us is that 75% of Florida's population is between 0 and 88.8 .8 years old. 